Okay, the lecture that we are going to have today is indeed on the extended Kalman filter for arterial determination. Yesterday we uh, started the earth uh, sensors uh, and uh, we are going to conclude uh, uh, the part on the arterial determination uh, by also introducing the sun sensors. That part uh, will probably be done uh, on Monday because today we have to focus uh, on uh, these exercises. So the first half of the lecture is focused on the theory of the theoretical uh, uh, formulation of the extended common filter and the second part will be a practical exercise. Whenever you have any questions uh, you can uh, of course uh, intervene, interrupt and we can indeed clarify if some of the passages are not clear. As I said uh, um, the um, part of uh, the explanation of the Kalman filter is uh, already done uh, in the first part of the course. So we assume uh, that that part uh, is already known. For example, what it means uh, innovation, what it means uh, the update, uh, uh, the propagation of the state transition matrix, uh, I'm not going to provide further details on that. So if you have any doubt, you, we, can ask, we can discuss that on, offline. So I would like to focus especially on what the extended common filter uh, needs for the attitude determination. So let's start with the, the uh, first uh, assumption. So the main assumption that we are going to consider is that we have that the optical bench frame is known with respect to the yeah. reference frame, or at least we have an approximate knowledge of that. So we are not going to deal with the first part of the um, operations that the start trigger has to do. So we are going to assume that the um, star tracker was already able to identify and acquire the stars. So we are uh, neglecting the first important step that is indeed the star acquisition. That one was already discussed when we talk about the uh, stars, uh, star triggers. So what we need to do here is that once we have uh, uh, an initial, a preliminary estimate of the attitude, use the star tracker to um, follow, to uh, determine the uh, attitude of the spacecraft with a very high sampling rate. So what you have seen with the quest algorithm is that for the quest algorithm we are able to solve the altitude for every single instant, every single time step. What the extended common filter allows here is to determine the um, attitude for the same time steps, but using also the information that the filter has accumulated so far. That's the reason why the quaternions are fundamental, because the gyroscopes are fundamental, because give you the uh, knowledge of the angular rate, angular spin rate of, uh, of the spacecraft uh, between one uh, tracking, one star uh, tracker measurement. So what we are able to do here is that to indeed have uh, an extended common filter that uses the um, star tracker measurements to determine the, the state and to measure the uh, uh, the spin rate uh, using the gyroscopes. So, see, so the main assumption that we have here is that uh, we are going to consider small variation of the quaternion. So what we are going to assume is that uh, in the, the next step, uh, so when we are going to use uh, the next, uh, uh, so the, the next measurements uh, of the quaternion, the axes uh, of the OBF uh, with respect to the inertial reference frame uh, are moving very slowly. So uh, or basically the movement, uh, the time step is small, and so the, the orientation variation of the OBF can, can be considered very small. So, so we have a delta Q 
that is small itself. And we have seen that in this case, we can assume that our delta theta is very close to, is very small as well. So it's very, very, very small. And we are able to determine the, uh, we are able to determine the uh, quaternion elements as a pure uh, product of the Ax times of, so the sine of delta theta will be indeed directly the angle delta theta. The same for Ax, Ay and A zeta. And we have that the scalar part, it will be equal to one, okay? So what we have here is that we are able to approximate the quaternion to a very small variation of the angle. So the other important thing that we have seen uh, in the previous slides, uh, so probably it's better if uh, I use uh, the formulation that we have seen uh, previously, is uh, that um, what we have here, so the quaternion will have a scalar part that would be equal to one, and each element of the quaternion is very close to the angular variation of the OBF in the x, y, and z direction. This, that will be uh, an assumption that will be useful now. The main assumption that we need to consider uh, at this stage is that for each time step, uh, the uh, quaternion scalar part will be very close to one or will be equal to one. So we don't need to use the entire quaternion, but only the uh, vector part of the quaternion. Okay, so what we have here, So what you can find here is that the quaternion itself can be approximated to this expression. However, at the very first stage, what you have to take into account is that the delta quaternion, so will be indeed only, the variable part will be only the vector part of the quaternion. The other thing that we have to take into account is that since we are going to use the gyroscope, not only we, are we want to estimate uh, the delta variation of the quaternion, so as I said, only the vectorial part of the quaternion, but also the bias that is induced uh, by the gyroscope. So we can use our measurements to refine the attitude, at the same time, the mismodeling uh, introduced uh, by the other sensors, in particular the gyroscope. So that's the main problem. That's the reason why you need a sequential estimation. So now it will be clear why we introduce uh, the uh, attitude equation in terms of quaternions. And this uh, formulation was already demonstrated before. Uh, and we know which is uh, the uh, exactly form of this matrix omega. As we, as we said, this uh, um, formulation, uh, it is uh, true if we consider uh, a form of a quaternion like this one, that in the other slide is called uh, with uppercase Q. So the three first uh, elements are the vector quaternion and the fourth is uh, the scalar quaternion. Our goal here is to determine the update of the state. So let's assume that we have our initial quaternion at Q0 at time t zero. Okay, so what happened here is that at time t one, we will have other uh, measurements from the gyroscope, from, from the star triggers. So we can indeed determine the quaternion and the instant q one. Okay. If you use the quest algorithm, what you do is determine q zero here, and determine Q1 here. If you have the gyroscope, you can use the uh, knowledge of omega 
from the gyroscope. So the gyroscope so give you the information of the omega during the two uh, close by measurements that you can use to propagate the knowledge that you have uh, considered the time, the previous uh, epoch to the next. That's the reason why the gyroscope represents a very important uh, instrument because you want to tie it, uh, so you want to propagate the knowledge of your quaternion from this instant to this one. That's the reason why what we want to do here is to combine what is predicted by the previous measurement of the quaternion from the star trigger propagated through the gyroscope with the new measurements collected with the star trigger. So for the quest algorithm, these two measurements are completely uncorrelated. With the extended camel filter, will not. So what we need to do is to determine Q hat one. So it means that this one will be the new, the, the estimated value at the instant one, for example. So what you have here is that you have to consider the dynamic, the kinematic equation of the quaternion for the estimated values. So you will have, when you find this hat here, this means that we are talking about the estimated value. In the previous, uh, in the introductory, introductory part of the course, uh, we have seen that if we want, uh, for example, determine the state of the quaternion from, uh, so at this stage here, from the previous time here, this will be indeed equal to Q0, the quaternion multiplication of this uh, quaternion times uh, the delta Q. And that's the reason why represent, this represents the main reason why we are not dealing with the pure extended common filter, but, but with the multiplicative extended common filter. So in the extended common filter that you have used for the um, orbital termination, you are not considering the variation of your state as a product, but you are using, you are, for example, having delta x, so the initial state, the, 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 um, the correction in your uh, state as the x minus x estimated or opposite, depends on the formulas that you use. And in this case, of course, you don't need to determine, uh, so you have a classical extended common filter. In this case, the variation in the attitude is modeled as multiplication of quaternion. So from this one, you can find that delta Q is equal to the multiplication of quaternion of the Q uh, of the quaternion of the previous uh, time times the inverse of the quaternion that we want to estimate. So this is uh, the main uh, difference between the extent, the common filter that you've seen before and the common filter we're, we're going to deal uh, with uh, the attitude. Okay, so now there are a bit, a uh, few uh, passages that depend on the properties of quaternion. So, if some of those passages are not clear to you, I invite you to try to check by using the multiplication of quaternion the validity of the relationship that we are showing here. We don't, we are, we don't have enough time to explain each single passages, but as I said, all passages can be demonstrated by using the definition of the multiplication of quaternion that I gave you in the previous uh, part of the course, especially if you want to have a reference. If you want to have a reference, you can use uh, this one, this chart here. So you can use uh, this product here in order to demonstrate what we have said, what we're going to say uh, in the next slides. Scusi una domanda. Prego. 
Eh, abbiamo detto che Q è il quaternione allo stato da cui voglio poi propagare, giusto? Q cappuccio. No, Q, Q cappuccio è quello che vogliamo stimare. Q sì. è quello iniziale? Q, sì. Ok, so the question is if this Q here is the Q uh, in the previous step, right? Yes, so... Sì, esatto, è quello. Ok, so yes, in the, the, it is uh, indeed uh, the quaternion uh, in the previous step because what we are trying to do here is to uh, propagate the knowledge that we have uh, gained uh, with the previous estimation of the quaternion to the next. So uh, this delta Q indeed, uh, will, you're going to see that depends indeed, for example, Uh, especially from the uh, spin rate of, uh, of the spacecraft. So that's the reason why the gyroscope will give you information on how to propagate that. So for you, Q is the estimation, uh, the estimated value of the quaternion at the time that we want. Q is indeed the quaternion at the previous time. Okay. Uh, so what... Sorry, just a yes. clarification. It's not the quaternion at the previous time, but it's the quaternion at the estimated at the previous time, but then propagated the, to the time k plus one. Yes, yes. So that, what uh, Paolo is saying is that, uh, because that will be uh, explained a little bit later when we are going to show you the, the, the process. But I mean, just to simplify what we are meaning here is that it could be also considered as the quaternion of the previous step. When we are going to deal with the, the formulation of the multiplica multiplically extended common filter, indeed, this quaternion will be indeed the quaternion that is at this time propagated at the time Q, uh, at time t1, for example. So it will be already propagated from this instant to this one, okay? But that's the reason why, I mean, that will be clearer later because uh, what uh, Paolo is saying is that basically the correction will be done uh, to the quaternion at, this, at a certain epoch. So what, what, what we need here is uh, to propagate the quaternion that we have measured before to the same instant. So this multiplication will be the quaternion at the same instant. If you want to compare basically this formulation with what you, what you have for the uh, orbit determination. Because of course here, when you do the uh, initial state at this time, you are doing the difference between your estimated value and the value that you have uh, Uh, that you have, um, so basically is uh, the adjustment to your a priori knowledge. What you have here is basically the same. So you have uh, the knowledge of the quaternion that is given by the previous information. And this is uh, the uh, estimated value that is given by the, the measurements. Correct, Paolo, right? Yes. Okay, yes, so the reason why I was explaining that this one is at the previous time is only to explain that this uh, uh, formula here. But in principle, uh, here what we are trying to explain is that uh, you have uh, a delta quaternion uh, that could be indeed uh, just a difference between uh, two different quaternions. So uh, at two different epochs uh, or the same quaternion, the same epoch, but with a certain error. So For the extended common fit, it is important to take into account that indeed the quaternions are at the same time step. But that will be clear later. That's the reason why I was not trying to um, emphasize that here. So if we use uh, the properties of the quaternion, uh, you can see that if you do the derivative, uh, uh, the time derivative of this expression here, you can see that indeed delta Q. Uh, delta Q uh, dot is equal to Q dot, uh, the quaternion multiplication to the quaternion estimated um, 
uh, in the inverse of the quaternion estimated, plus uh, the same expression with the time derivative on the quaternion that is estimated. So you can uh, find easily that uh, what we want to do here is to find an expression of delta q dot that uh, will be that will only depend so we would like to find a function that will be only related to the uh, delta q and uh, our omega okay so our goal is indeed to try to transform this one to this uh, function here so that's the reason why we start with by considering this property of quaternion. So if we do the multiplication of uh, two quaternion, uh, so the same quaternion is its inverse, we have that the vector part is equal to zero and the scalar part is equal to one. So if you do the derivative of this expression, you can easily demonstrate that it is equal to zero. So you can, you, you can find these properties so that you have that q dot, uh, the multiplication of q dot, q dot, uh, q prime, the inverse of q hat, and the same expression that we have seen before. So now we substitute this expression in 1.2, in this expression here. So basically this one is q hat dot, right? So by substituting that here, you, you find indeed this expression that is only related to the estimated quaternion, okay? You can use the definition of the omega matrix uh, in order to uh, basically uh, determine this uh, simple expression uh, that you have here. So by using the expression of uh, big omega, you can find indeed uh, that this one quaternion here is indeed equal to zero, 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 one. That is coming from equation 1.5. So this is uh, from equation 1.5, okay? If you do the multiplication of this matrix to this uh, quaternion, you can find that that will be your result. Now, what we have to do is to explicit this uh, term here. So what we do is indeed uh, try to determine the inverse uh, of the time derivative of the estimated quaternion in this form here. So you can find easily that uh, q dot, uh, uh, so the inverse of this quaternion is equal to minus uh, uh, one over two and this expression here. You are, we, are, we are only inverting equation 1.8. Okay, so uh, by substituting equation 1.9 in uh, equation 1.4, so basically, we have found uh, this expression of uh, q dot minus one. So we substitute this term in uh, this bit here. And we also substitute uh, this term here with equation 1.2, in which basically, actually there is not an expression, but you know that q.2 is equal to be careful of, uh, of the difference. So this omega here is not uh, omega hat. Omega hat is your spin rate adjusted. So your estimated spin rate. This is uh, the spin rate propagated, okay? Correct, Paolo, right? So you have to take into account that uh, when you do this expression, so when you substitute in equation 1.4, the expression of q dot and q dot minus one, what you have 
is indeed the first part will be equal to omega zero. And the second one, it will be omega at. So let's recap that. So what you can do here is that you can redo the same computation that we have done for Q at with the Q that is the quaternion uh, that is propagated from the previous step. So if we do the same, you can find exactly the same expression of Q dot minus one equal to minus Q minus one, the uh, quaternion multiplication of omega, because as I said, is not the omega of, is not the omega that you have adjusted, but is the omega uh, that you propagated from the prime. So basically is the omega that uh, is given uh, by the, the previous step. So there is a difference between this omega f and this omega. That's the reason why if uh, in equation 1.4 you substitute this expression, what you can find is indeed this one that comes from the fact that you have. Uh, so let me rewrite this expression here. So from equation 1.4, you have that delta q dot is equal to. Um, so Q dot the minus one at plus Q. Yes, the Q uh, dot minus one. So by substituting those two equations here, so let's call it the one nine A, you can find easily that this one will be indeed the one two omega zero times uh, uh, Q, uh, I started with the wrong one, but um, here you have to use uh, the equation of uh, the, the attitude kinematic equation. So you have omega, omega Q times Q minus one plus or minus actually, you have one over two Q at times, so this is not Q at, is only Q, times Q minus one, the product of the quaternions of this matrix, omega hat zero. So you know that this one is equal to delta Q and also this one is equal to delta Q. And that's the reason why you find this expression because the matrix uh, omega, omega, it can be indeed expressed. So this is the matrix omega of omega. You're able to determine this expression here. I know that it is uh, a little bit complicated, but as I said, uh, it depends on the quaternion multiplication products. Okay, so as I said, 
we have to define also the error in the spin rate. So we have our estimated value of omega and our value that indeed represents our a priori knowledge. Okay? So, Q, of course, without the hat, is associated to omega, and the estimated value of omega hat is associated to D. So we can reformulate this equation here by expliciting that omega is indeed equal to omega hat plus a certain error, delta omega, and you're able to have this expression here. As I said, uh, the main, uh, uh, all these passages are not really important. You, you can see that uh, for you to know by art. So you have this upper triangle here. That means that you don't need to know all the passages, but it's important to understand what is the final. So what, uh, from what the uh, final equation of this filter comes from. So you can indeed do delta Q dot that is equal to this expression. And uh, we're going to use uh, further um, properties of the quaternion. As I said, we know that omega at, so this expression is indeed of, of quaternions correspond to this expression uh, with matrices. So this matricial form expression. We can also determine a similar expression to omega that is called gamma of omega that is very similar to this one. And this is basically by have uh, the uh, by replacing the order of the in the quaternion multiplication, and you can notice that uh, this form of uh, this uh, matrix uh, is very similar to omega. It doesn't have the minus in front. So basically, this is an additional explanation, but that will be really important because in the expression that we have here, we have the um, this product delta Q times omega zero, so the um, quaternion multiplication. So by using this matricial form here in this equation 1.11, we can find uh, finally a more compact uh, formulation. So we can find that the, the derivative in time of the error in the quaternion is indeed equal to the um, product of the matrix times uh, the delta quaternion, the vectorial part, plus uh, this uh, product of delta omega and uh, delta Q. The, uh, the expression of the cross product of a vector is known. You know that this is the skew antisymmetric matrix of the cross product of two vectors. So we have found this expression that, could, that is basically the basis for our extended common filter, our multiplicative extended common filter. However, there is a problem here that probably you have noticed. So we know that this first part of the equation is basically linear. So we don't need to linearize the problem. Here we have delta omega that multiplies the delta quaternion. So there is a nonlinear term that we have to take into account. So we need to do a first order approximation in order to approximate that this product here is uh, approximately equal to the uh, directly this matrix here or this quaternion here, sorry. So you don't need to have uh, an additional multiplication with the delta quaternion. By doing this first order approximation, we are able and that we can do only if uh, the, for example, we have a very close by time steps. Uh, that means uh, that, so if we have the delta T is uh, very, very small, uh, 
we, we know that the delta quaternion is also very small, okay? So the variation in the attitude is very, very small. So actually this one means that the error in the quaternion, but if we do the delta quaternion, that means the differences between the quaternion at the instant time one and the time t zero. So if this is true, so we have uh, two integration, uh, the integration time that is really small, uh, this uh, is a very um, uh, a negligible approximation. So it is fine to do, uh, to operate this approximation. So at the end, uh, what we find, uh, and the other thing is that uh, uh, you can approximate that also delta Q is very, very small because if you are able to update the system very often, also the error in the quaternion knowledge is very, very small, okay? And uh, this uh, translates in a very small, uh, oh, actually a scalar part of the quaternion that tends to be equal to one. And so that's the reason why you have the delta Q4 is, point is equal to zero. So we can neglect basically the scalar part of the quaternion and we can focus only on the vectorial part of the quaternion itself. Okay, so before the break, uh, we can, uh, we have to take into account uh, that when we have uh, uh, the measurements from the star trackers uh, that enables to give you the uh, possible delta Q uh, with the quest algorithm. But you can also have a delta Q using extended common filter if you are able to uh, propagate the state from the previous epoch. So that's the reason why when I wrote uh, that the delta Q is equal to Q quaternions of Q at minus one. As we, so this Q here indeed will represent our QK computed at the K minus one. So it is the value computed at the time, um, uh, the quaternion that is computed at the time uh, k minus one, so the previous uh, uh, step size, that is propagated to the time k. Our q hat will be the value that we are going to estimate at the time k. So it will be our correction. So in principle, this delta q has to converge to zero, but it will not because of other sources. To determine this term here, so to propagate the state from this, the, east, the, the time k minus one to the time k, you need the quaternion, uh, sorry, you need a spin rate measurement from the gyroscope. That's the reason why we need to know omega. But as we have seen uh, uh, yesterday or the day before, we have uh, that those measurements are affected by, by error by significant error. So what we have here is that our gyroscope give you, uh, give us the uh, readout of the gyroscope. It will not be directly omega, but will be uh, affected by a certain bias, a certain uh, torque float rate, and also another term that we have called the rate random walk. So we have to be careful that if we want to propagate our quaternion from the epoch k minus one to the epoch k, those measurements of omega that are given by our uh, gyroscope are affected by these error sources. Okay, so we know that we modeled uh, eta one and eta two as uh, Gaussian uh, zero mean Gaussian white noise processes. So that means uh, that for eta one, we have a normal distribution with zero mean value and the sigma V. 
and we have that eta two, it will be a Gaussian distribution, normal distribution with zero mean sigma, sorry, sigma u. Be careful that this expression here only means that the mean value of your omega measured from the gyroscope will be affected by a mean value of B. So that means that your uh, eta mean value is equal to zero. And this expression here means that eta two mean value is equal to zero. So we are assuming that model of uh, the gyroscope noise that enables us, uh, so allows us to determine the uh, error in the uh, spin rate. So the delta omega that we have seen here, that we have introduced in this expression here, when we have said that omega is equal to omega at plus delta omega, as I said, this is coming from the uh, gyroscope error. So this is the value that is estimated by the gyroscope plus the error induced by the gyroscope itself. So our delta omega that we have modeled here correctly, because of course uh, when you want to propagate uh, the uh, quaternion from the epoch k minus one to the epoch k, you will use uh, omega of the gyroscope, but this omega of the gyroscope will not be the, um, so you will use uh, indeed uh, the, uh, you will need to use the omega, that will be the omega estimated plus a delta error. So we have to be careful that uh, your measurements, uh, your uh, G indeed, uh, will not be exactly equal to omega. That's the reason why when you do the difference between omega minus omega g, so here, so omega minus omega hat, what you have is indeed this term here. There will be a delta b, so if you do the differentiation, you can uh, determine indeed that this delta omega will be delta b plus eta one. Those are vectors, of course, because we are dealing with uh, uh, the, the vector of the spin rate. Okay, so let's see. Yes, we have another couple of minutes, so we can conclude this part uh, and we can indeed uh, let's restart with the, uh, so, the problem here is Così. yes. Uh, io non ho ben capito come mai nel, nella equazione dell'estimated angular velocity non teniamo più conto di eta 1. Ok, here. Ok, I, I knew that this one is uh, could be misleading. So what I mean here is that we are not this this doesn't mean that we are not taking into account eta 1. So uh, this is a statistical view, uh, statistics view of, uh, uh, of the problem. It means that since eta one uh, has a normal distribution, so as we said, a normal distribution with a zero mean is a Gaussian distribution like that. We are considering that the zero value, so the mean value is equal to zero. So the most probable value that we are going to have is indeed zero. It means that the mean value of our uh, measured uh, omega will be not affected by eta one. So the mean value of eta one is equal to zero. This not, doesn't mean that we don't, know, that we don't have an error induced by omega. The error that is induced by eta one is uh, um, a perturbation uh, with uh, a certain sigma and so will be visible in our delta omega. So when you do the difference between what you measure uh, from, the, uh, from the gyroscope, so omega at, 
minus the, um, the real value of your angular velocity. So basically here, what I'm, we are trying to highlight is that eta one and eta two, the mean value of these two terms are equal to zero. But if you use, for example, eta two equal to zero, this means that b dot, the mean value of b dot is equal to zero. But when you do the, uh, so it means that you have a constant bias in the mean expression, in the mean value of omega. So this is only a, statistic, uh, a statistical point of view. So in, uh, from the statistical point of view, if you have that the perturbation as a mean value, a, a, an average estimate of omega give you indeed the value that the readouts minus the, uh, the bias, the constant bias. But if you, that, that is uh, if you do, for example, uh, the, um, I, if you have uh, multiple observations at the same time. So let's assume that you have multiple observations at the same time with this Gaussian distribution. If you have the noise with this Gaussian distribution and you do the average of these errors, you will have a zero mean, okay? So you will have that the mean value will be equal to zero. But if you take only one observation or only few observation, this value will not be the mean value, it will be a value that is statistically is underneath this curve. So this statistical variation of the error is given by delta omega. So if you have, for example, a single measurement or few measurements, your measurements will be affected by delta omega that will be equal to the delta B plus eta one. From the statistical point of view, what, what does it matter is the difference between the knowledge of uh, your measurement, so the measurement, uh, the measured observable, and the one that is, uh, so the real value, the, the true value of the, uh, of the parameter. So here is only referring to the mean value of the observation. But eta one and eta two give you indeed uh, uh, a certain uh, errors uh, that is indeed uh, uh, with a certain sigma eta one and certain sigma uh, eta two for b dot. So I would stop here for a break. Uh, let's do a 10 or uh, yes, almost uh, 12 minutes break. So if you have other question, we can stop to here. But what we can do afterwards, uh, we are going to in reintroduce uh, finally the, the final equation that we need to, to use in extended common filter. And uh, Paolo Cappuccio will uh, give you examples that uh, show you how to deal um, with the uh, extended common filter. So let's have a break here. The, uh, the first part uh, of uh, the, the lecture was indeed uh, trying to give you the passages that you need to arrive to this uh, final uh, formula here. So the main purpose uh, that we have the, the, uh, of the Farenkopf uh, uh, gyroscope is to, to indeed uh, try to model your measured angular velocity g with the real angular velocity of the spacecraft. As we have seen, uh, this real angular velocity omega is equal to uh, the, uh, your om omega at plus a delta omega. So you know that your the real measurements, so the, the real measurements of uh, your omega is indeed omega at plus omega, plus delta omega. And this delta omega, as we have seen, is equal to minus delta B plus eta one. The only explanation that we have done here is only related to the mean value of omega and B dot. So since eta one and eta two are normal distribution, a noise with zero mean value, you have that the mean value of these two is equal to that one. But what you are looking at, what you want to determine is indeed delta omega. And delta omega is equal to minus delta B plus eta one. So the main problem here is that not only we have to determine delta Q, but we also have to determine delta B. 
So delta B is indeed the bias, the real bias minus the bias estimated. So we want to have an adjustment of the delta bias. So the equation that we want to solve here is this one. So will be indeed linear. And we want to include all uh, these, uh, so we need to take into account all these, uh, uh, all these uh, terms uh, in order to determine the quaternion and uh, the bias itself. So as I said uh, in the previous part of the, the lecture, we know that the quaternion and theta uh, are ba basically, uh, can be, uh, I think here there is an error, right? Uh, should be a two, I guess. Uh, no, 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 because there is a theta and theta. Okay, so basically, as we have seen, uh, seen before, what we have seen before is that we can approximate the delta theta is equal to this expression here, since we are only looking at the vectorial part of the quaternion. So at the end, what do we have is uh, this expression with respect to the uh, vector given by the variation of the angles in the body frame x, y, z. Since we are able to approximate the quaternion, the vectorial part of the quaternion is approximate to the, to, uh, to the angle of the spacecraft. And this is uh, also another uh, view of the problem if you prefer to integrate the angles of the OBF. You have to be careful that D delta Q has to be really small in order to have uh, that this uh, formulation is valid. However, let's go to the, uh, to the main uh, software. So what we have to solve here is uh, this uh, pair of uh, equation. So we have uh, the partial derivative, so the time, time derivative of delta Q as a function of delta Q and delta bias. But also we know that the delta bias is a function of time and it is directly related to eta 2. So in the first equation, uh, we have uh, uh, both eta 1 and eta 2 contribution. If we want to write this equation in a, a matricial form, uh, or in vector form actually, what we need to do is to define a vector delta x that is given by the three elements of the quaternion vector and the bias. Uh, vector as well as well is a vector the bias because if you have three gyroscope uh, you will have uh, three biases so this is the form and you have uh, a first uh, matrix that is varying over time and uh, multiplies the um, is given by this expression here so there is no relationship between uh, the uh, delta q uh, sorry delta b and the delta q so the time derivative of delta B and delta Q, that's the reason why these two terms are equal to zero. And you have also the matrix GDT that basically give you uh, the relationship between the uh, vector uh, delta Q and uh, eta one and eta two. This is important because you can, you can see that uh, the first uh, uh, term uh, appears in the first uh, set of equation. Eta two appears in the second one. So this is only a vectorial form, a vector form of uh, the same uh, equations here. As you have done for the extended common filter for the attitude determination, uh, for the orbit determination, what you have to do is to determine the uh, update of your state by using the new measurements. So what we need to do here is that we have to deal with another problem that you have not seen during the, during the, the orbit determination problem. The main problem is the covariance matrix PK uh, medium, uh, so the, the average uh, of PK, so it's the updated covariance matrix that is not only uh, dependent, so it does not only depend on the covariance matrix given by the previous uh, epoch 
and is propagated using the transition matrix. But you have also an additional matrix that is called the QK minus one. That is the, the, the matrix that is called the process noise matrix. Before I describe this matrix, I briefly describe how to compute the, uh, the first part, so the transition matrix. As you have seen for the orbit termination, the transition matrix is the matrix that enables to propagate the state from an instant t minus one to, for example, an epoch k. So if you have the initial conditions, you are able to propagate the, uh, these, and you know FDT, you are able to determine, uh, to propagate the covariance, the uh, transition matrix over time. So this is, here there is a form of the transition matrix that of course has a part that depends on the quaternion and the part that depends on the bias. So you have two sub matrix that are shown here that Paolo Capucci is going to show you with the script. So we are not going to give you an expression here directly, but if in case you are interested, we can give you an additional slide that explains it the form of the transition matrix of the aptitude. The main important thing is that you have to take into account is that those, uh, in order uh, to propagate transition matrix, you can easily see that you need to only propagate uh, this uh, uppercase theta and uppercase psi. So basically, you need to propagate uh, these two set of equations. Once you know the um, you should be able to indeed propagate the state, starting from the initial condition in which theta and psi are respectively an identity matrix and a null matrix. So this is similar to what you have seen for the RB determination problem. The main other problem is this Q that you have not introduced, I guess, in your uh, orbit determination problem, and it's called the process noise. So looking at the final uh, slides uh, as for reference, uh, you can see that when you have uh, uh, the dynamical equations, uh, or in this case is a kinematic equations, uh, you have a term that is the linear term dependency term plus an additional term that is given by the other parameters. In our case, these additional terms depends on delta b. Okay, so our goal is to propagate only this first part. This represents only a process noise, basically. So if we ignore that process noise, our measurement will be affected by an error. So we have to be careful that when we propagate the covariance matrix, this term is indeed included. So one way to model this process noise is to assume that the is value is equal to zero. And it is a reasonable uh, approximation because we know that the derivative over time of delta b is indeed uh, eta two. And we know that eta two is mean value is equal to zero. Now, the main problem is to compute the variance of these parameters. And uh, uh, so the, um, basically we need to know, uh, to compare or to compare also to, to determine, uh, for example, uh, the uh, matrix Q that we have seen before. So this process noise covariance matrix, I'm not going to give you too many details on that because there are other courses in which you are going to deal with the deep process noise matrix, but you have to be careful that you need to propagate this error if you basically try to ignore possible errors or sources induced by additional errors given by, in this case, the gyroscopes. So here you can find uh, a, a, a detailed uh, uh, description on how to compute uh, the process noise transition matrix. So if you want to have, for example, a precise uh, determination of the process noise. 
uh, that could be useful, of course, uh, but uh, uh, as I said, it is outside the scope of this course. So what I can tell you is that uh, this Q matrix here is part of uh, a, a procedure that is often used in the common filter and is called the tuning of the filter. So assuming that you are not able to propagate this error, but you can try to assume a certain form of Q in order to take into account the error introduced by these uh, errors of the gyroscopes. So what does it mean is that you can try to provide different uh, terms of Q. You can, for example, use a diagonal matrix with the value of, uh, of the elements that could be given by the possible, the maximum possible errors induced by the, the gyroscopes in order to take into account that when you try to determine the covariance matrix of your quaternions, the, this mismodeling is indeed uh, in, uh, taken into, into account. So the tuning of the filter is important because when you deal with this matrix, you're going to see that basically the terms given by the gyroscopes are not really part of our integration. So when we integrate the state, we are completely ignoring this part because the transition matrix is only given by the uh, propagation of the transition matrix at the previous epoch times the matrix FDT. That is the matrix given by the relationship between the uh, temporal variation of Q or delta Q and delta Q. So basically what we need to do here is that if we want to take into account that there are possible mismodeling on, in the filter, we can try to use, for example, uh, the process noise formulation that enables also the propagation of those errors with the transition matrix, as we do for for these um, uh, for uh, for the quaternion, as uh, it is written in the last slides of the course. But you can also try a simple method that, that consists in. Uh, uh, try to use different values for Q uh, of the elements of the matrix Q in order to determine uh, what is the best tuning between this matrix and the other matrix that we are going to see next. So in order to conclude this discussion on the method, so the, exte uh, the extended uh, common filter, so the multiplicative extended common filter consists in try to determine a predicted measurements of the quaternion at the epoch k from the epoch k minus one. So let's say that we have a measurement set at the epoch k minus one. We determine k q k minus one at the time k minus one. What we need to do is to propagate that at the epoch k through the uh, stays transition matrix, that is uh, this one. So it will be P, T, K, T, K minus one. So it is this matrix here. This matrix here depends, uh, as you can see, by the propagation through the matrix FDT, but FDT depends on the angular velocity measured at the time k minus one, k minus one. So if you want to determine the, uh, if you want to determine these uh, matrix here, you have to propagate the state from one epoch to the other one by using the gyroscope. So by using the angular velocity measured by the gyroscope. But if you want to have basically the omega k 
k minus one. Paolo, correct me if I'm wrong, but this should be correct. So the, what we want to do here is to start to have a q k k minus one. So it is your predicted measurement from the transition matrix. But this is not what we, what we want, because at the time k... Scusi, professore. Prego, prego. Ma nel propagare il quaternione mh, stimato dal tempo meno 1 al tempo, al tempo k meno 1 al tempo k, non dovremmo usare tutta l'equazione della cinematica e non, diciamo, quella linearizzata attraverso la matrice di transizione? Cioè la matrice di transizione opera sul del Q, non sul Q. Sul... Ah, uh, ok. So, that I, I didn't put the... Yes, so basically this is uh, uh, correct. So, what you mean here is that... Uh, so, the question is regarding... We have uh, to determine the... Uh, so we have to propagate the error and not the, uh, that is correct. So here briefly it is uh, introduced uh, uh, Q, but of course uh, what I was referring is indeed the Delta Q in our case, okay? But it, it is a, a simple assumption because basically your Q, K, K minus one. So if you want to determine Delta Q, um, basically, um, so the, let me, let me erase that. But that will be clearer when, uh, when we are going to do the, uh, the exercise. I'm trying to speed a little bit up in order to have uh, this uh, uh, part uh, explained with the software. That would be easier. I don't know if, if Paolo wants to, uh, say something regarding that, but basically... Yes, basically at, at this stage you are just to integrate with the, um, the normal equation of the kinematics, so uh, one half of the omega matrix of the quaternion. Okay, okay, era, era quello che dicevo. Yes. Yes, yes, so... The, so it, yeah, basically the fee, the fee matrix that you need uh, is uh, for uh, the, um, for what it is uh, next indeed. So it is correct that indeed here is not the, let me correct that. So if you want to propagate from that one, the, the transition matrix was indeed when you want to compute the, um, when you want to compute the covariance matrix. So if you want to compute uh, your uh, propagation, you won't propagate your state as, uh, uh, as you said, uh, is correct, you have to use uh, your uh, entire kinematic equation. So let, let me write down because uh, just to don't provide confusion since we have too many expression, okay. But when you want to do the, co the propagation of the covariance, in that case, uh, we will use indeed uh, phi, okay? Because in that case, uh, we are trying to propagate the error. Okay, so what happened here is that uh, we propagate uh, the state from this one to this one, uh, that would be uh, using the uh, angular velocity given by the quaternion in this expression here. So one, we is, one can wonder what we need to do now. So uh, for uh, the uh, Kalman filter that we have in orbit termination. Uh, Professore, in... posso fare una domanda? Sì, sí, prego. Eh, scusi, io non ho capito perché qui uh, lei ha usato il quaternione con il cappello. Cioè non dovremmo usare l'altro quando dobbiamo fare la propagazione dalla, dalla prima epoca all'epoca attuale. Dalla prima so, cioè, dal tempo iniziale al tempo dove abbiamo le nuove misure, non l'avevamo chiamato Q e basta. Ok, so, well, the, the, the question is, uh, if, uh, 
since uh, before we we wrote uh, that delta q is equal to q times uh, uh, q hat minus one uh, so why now there is a, a q hat basically right that's the question so the basically uh there is a a sort of mismatch between the two so what we need to do here is that uh, let's assume uh, that you have uh, a real case so what happened here is that you have uh, your measurement at the time uh, q uh, k minus one so your best knowledge of uh, at the time uh, k minus one will be indeed k minus one at the time uh, k minus one so basically in order to be consistent with what we have done before what you need to do is to substitute to your q your q uh, hat because basically you don't in order to propagate the state you need to start from an initial state and the initial state is given by your best knowledge knowledge of the measurement at that time so it will be clearer uh, with the with the, the exercise of course now probably there is a, a sort of misleading um, uh, reference uh, between uh, these uh, delta q equal to q so this one and what we have here but as i said uh, the important thing that you have to take into account is that now we are trying to apply that uh, formulation to the kalman filter itself so your knowledge at the previous instant is indeed your uh, estimation at the time k minus one k minus one so you have to propagate that state from uh, the evil k minus one k and that is done through the spin rate measured by the gyroscope so basically you have to substitute that yes antonio sorry if i can add on this the yes, previous yes. Uh, equation the one with the product we can interpret this as a um, a general equation to um, express the difference in two quaternions so instead of doing the uh, actual difference of each component we are just doing a cross product that is a general equation it can be applied to every couple of quaternion you mean this one, yeah, yeah. This one right I mean, this is general you can yeah, apply to whatever you want. Equation. so what we need so what we formulated right now is by assuming um, yes that this quaternion is at the previous epoch or as I said, is the quaternion at the same epoch, uh, but uh, uh, propagated from the previous state. So this is a general expression of multiplication from two quaternions. So it is uh, the uh, delta that if uh, these two equations, so let's assume that this uh, k minus one, k, k minus one, and this is a k uh, k so what it means here is that delta q is the product or is the difference between the predicted state and what you update with the new state okay what paolo was saying is indeed that this expression is valid for all the uh, possible product of quaternions so now we have to use this expression in the case that I show you here, so in which you have k minus one and k. So at the, the value k minus one indeed is, is given by the best estimate at the times k minus one. And so you use the, um, you propagate this one to the time, uh, um, to, to the next time that you are uh, using for uh, with a new observation. I think there was another question, uh, but or or not, Paolo. You want to add something because I think that uh, we will. Uh, I, I don't think we will net, we'll have time today for the for the. We will need another uh, half an hour next week uh, for the exercise. So it's better if we clarify the method because uh, I understand that there are many question marks here. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. So just to uh, make it a bit more clear. So the, in this case, um, we are updating the um, 
actually, if we are correcting the delta Q as a product instead of what we were doing with um, RBA determination with a difference. And this is due to a peculiar characteristic of the quaternion, but is in principle the same thing. So we are just saying, how do we do, how do we compute the difference between what we have, so what we know, the estimate and the new measurement? Mm -hmm. Yes, so. So basically this Q at K, K minus one is what we actually know now without taking a new measurement at the time K. Then okay. at time K, we get a new measurement, which is called in this case uh, P, PK. And we want to make the two um, to match or understand which is the difference between the two. And so instead of doing the difference, we do the uh, cross product. Yes, exactly. So by doing the analogy, yes, uh, between uh, these two. Uh, so what? Uh, so previously we have defined this delta Q as uh, Q. Um, so the quaternion multiplication of Q and Q at minus one. Okay. Now we have to put in the context of what we are doing here. So what happened here? We have the initial state at the time Q K minus one, K minus one. This represents our best knowledge. We propagate by using the equation of the kinematic equations in order to determine a Q, K, K minus one. This represents our predicted measurements. When you do for the uh, attitude determination, it's simpler because you do the difference of your best knowledge minus the estimate, okay? Or the at, basically. So that's your delta X. Here you are doing exactly the same. So if you want to determine delta Q, Delta Q is indeed your uh, new measurements times the previous measurements. So let me write that here like that. So we are using the expression that we have seen before. So what we are missing, the new observation. So what happened here is that at that time P K, we have a new observation that consists in a quaternion PK. That is, for example, so let's assume that we have a star sensors uh, that give you an obser uh, observation in time K. So what we do here, we are going to use the quest algorithm in order to determine the attitude at that instant here, PK, so the quaternion PK given by the quaternion, given by the star triggers. So, so the quaternion PK is our updated state. So is our new measurements PK. So I know that here probably the order of, uh, of the quaternions can be a matter of confusion. But the important thing here is that uh, it's not the, uh, it's not the sign of your delta. The important thing here is that uh, since it is a multiplicative extended common filter, your delta, positive or negative, is given by the new measurements PK given by the quaternion times the quaternion that is propagated from the previous state. Okay? So you do the quest, quest algorithm in order to determine PK. PK is new, the new measurement. So your delta Q represents the difference between the estimated quaternion propagated from the previous measurements and the new measurements PK. This delta Q is the difference between the prediction and the, uh, the new measurements. It is called the innovation. So your zeta hat. The other thing that we have to take into account is the measurement error covariance. So, as I said, when you uh, trying to determine, we're going to determine the uncertainty of these measurements, we needed to take into account not only the covariance propagated from the previous step, but also this called uh, process noise measure, uh, matrix. 
when I was talking about the, uh, the tuning, the tuning usually is done between the matrix Q and the other matrix R. The matrix R is given by the uh, formal uncertainty of the measurement. So you have the, your measurement has a formal uncertainty sigma k that um, give you indeed your um, covariance, so the covariance uh, error of, uh, of your measurements. The other matrix that you have to take into account is the sensitivity matrix XK that is defined as it is here. So you can now develop the, uh, the entire uh, filter by including all those information. So you, first of all, determine the matrix KK it is given by the covariance matrix, the sensitivity matrix, and the uh, error covariance matrix of your measurements. But as I said, your matrix PK that you have here is not only dependent from the covariance matrix propagated from the previous epoch, so the time here k minus one to the time k by using the transition matrix. So in this case, what I was saying indeed here is that if you want to propagate the covariance matrix from k minus one to k, you have to take into account the uh, covariance matrix. So k, k minus one. But you also have to take into account this matrix Q that, uh, as I said, it is better to consider as a, a matrix that you're going to tune with respect to your measurement R. For example, if you expect that your errors in the gyroscopes is diverging, you usually use a larger uh, Q in order to take into account that your measurement could be uh, in omega, it is indeed really affected by the, the errors in the gyroscope uh, readout. Oh, on the other hand, if you have that your bias, you think that your bias are enough correct, you can indeed reduce that. And so your uh, error given by, uh, so this is the error given by your uh, sensors uh, other sensors, so the star triggers, earth sensors, or sun sensors. So if you have that Q is lower than R, you are considering that the value of your measurements from the sensors is uh, lower. So if you consider R is larger, you consider that the error from those errors, from those sensors is larger. So basically the important thing is indeed a comparison between R and Q. R is given by the uh, sun uh, star trackers, so the star trackers, sun sensors, uh, or uh, the uh, earth sensors. The Q is given by the bias of the gyroscope. So by tuning the two, you are able to determine a better convergence. So we are going to see better with the exercise. So what you do here is that you need to do an update of your state that is not only given by delta Q, but is also given by the parameters of the gyroscope. So you have to multiply these uh, uh, basically normal matrices to the uh, innovation zeta K. So as you have done for the, uh, for the orbit determination. A similar expression is for the covariance uh, matrix. So by using the expression of the covariance matrix propagated from the previous step, you indeed determine the covariance matrix that takes into account the predictions, but also the new measurements. The interesting thing here is that uh, the update uh, in the quaternion, so our final Q at uh, 
is indeed uh, the one that we have written here, so the one that we have predicted here, times our delta Q K. Our delta Q K is then given by the innovation times the normal matrices K K. The advantage of this middle is that we have only three elements for the updated quaternion and the bias update that is given by the number of, uh, of gyroscopes. I know that uh, this uh, uh, representation could be, uh, I mean, uh, would require some time to digest. So it is better to conclude uh, as it is uh, right now. So uh, next week uh, on Monday, I propose to have uh, this uh, uh, exercise uh, using so a MATLAB code that show you the specific uh, differences between uh, uh, the uh, matrices that we have introduced here. But the, the main advantage of the uh, Kalman filter we're going to see is that if you have uh, uh, measurements of uh, the uh, you are able to having the measurements uh, of the star triggers for example every single step what you're going to see is that the quest algorithm will provide you a larger noise if you are able to use the gyroscope to connect one observation to the other one, so you're able to propagate the knowledge of the attitude from one step to the next one, what you can get indeed is that the, uh, your estimation is going to improve. It's going to improve if you were able to tune the matrix R and Q, but especially Q because R is given by the sigma of the star trackers in this case. If you are able to tune the matrix Q, that will give you a reasonable convergence of your method. So we are not going to discuss in detail how to determine uh, uh, Q by using uh, realistic data. What I can suggest is that you can easily uh, tune uh, your uh, Q by considering that uh, you know what could be the error induced by the, the gyroscope, for example. So the, what it will be uh, done during the exercise next Monday is indeed to show you an example by using star triggers uh, with the quest algorithm and the star triggers and the gyroscope for extending common filter. The main advantage indeed is, in the, is a better resolution of the attitude that will be anyway really affected by your predicted knowledge of, so your assumed knowledge of Q. So the process noise for the extended, the multiplica, the extended common filter represents a big problem. So the, the formulation that we have used uh, so far is indeed to show you that we need to determine the differences between two quaternions by using this form, this multiplicate form. Afterwards, you use the same uh, uh, formulation in order to determine the uh, update in your estimation using the new measurements from the star trackers and the one that is propagated from the previous step. This one doesn't represent our delta Q, so this one it is not our delta QK. Delta QK is the multiplication of the uh, matrix called the KK times the innovation zeta where zeta is indeed the uh, this uh, uh, product here. I know that probably uh, you need uh, some time to digest, so uh, I think that it is uh, good to stop here. And uh, let's uh, re restart from, uh, from, from Git uh, next Monday. So next Monday we are going to um, have uh, this exercise on uh, the quaternions uh, using the um, quest algorithm and the uh, multiplicate extended common filter. 
And in the second half, uh, we are going to conclude a part uh, on the Earth sensor and the Sun sensors, because next week we're going to start the um, control theory for the uh, control uh, of, of spacecraft. So I wish you a good weekend and let me know if you have any questions. But if you still have doubts or questions regarding Kalman filter, I invite you to uh, join us on uh, Monday morning. And so having a questions just before that, so at 10 a.m.